All right. This is going to be a bit of a different talk than I usually give. Um, I must warn, I'm going to be changing hats in the middle of uh, the talk. And this is going to be an exercise for you because I am not wearing a hat now. Also, I am not going to be wearing a hat later. I did think, let's do the thing where you have a hat and then you change with another hat. But then I decided, don't do that because you don't know how to wear a hat. Also, I don't really have hats. So it would have been a bit awkward. Um, so instead, we're going to start with a slightly confusing slide of a French landscape that um, maybe some of you will recognize. Um, what we're going to talk about today is about how, while we've been working in a highly professionalized field like software is, and while we've been working on, on very difficult topics, sometimes um, the professionalization of our uh, space has been uh, limited. And what I would like to do is, on the, other, on the one hand, uh, offer a perspective of what this looks like uh, from a first-hand experience. And then second, um, put forward the, the vision that we see from, from the KDV on how we can improve this situation that, that we're in right now so that, well, we can see people staying around for longer time and so that we can have people um, give the attention to our products that, that our product need. So my first uh, hat on, whoa, I'm blurry. My first hat on is the one where I'm called Alex Paul. I am from Barcelona. I have been employed by Blue Systems since 2011, which means that this November, it's going to be a decade that I've been with Blue Systems. I've also uh, collaborated with KDE in the past, uh, somewhat professionally, uh, namely through the Google Summer of Code program that I imagine that most of you have heard of, but well, not exclusively. I've done uh, other contracted work as part of my professional life, but like you can see, most of it has been largely around KDE and well, proud of it. Now, um, what I wanted to reflect on here is, let's say you're a business and you want to work, uh, you want to create a product and you see KDE, uh, KDE, uh, KDE's availability over there. Um, how do you turn uh, what the, that community is pushing forward? Let's remember what KDE does is for free and you can uh, reuse all of that work for free, which is, well, obviously uh, economically very interesting. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's uh, unequivocally interesting, but it's definitely work that you can reuse and, and, and start uh, working with. Now, um, what I, I, I suggest uh, all of you who think, all right, there's a business opportunity here. How do we, how do we, uh, make profit from it, well, what you need to say is, all right, there's all of these components that, that I need. Uh, from KDE, we've been very forward about making our systems very well, configurable, being very reusable. We've put forward a lot of frameworks so that you don't have to take all of the, all of the things. So, well, the first step would definitely be, what do I need from, from all of that, that stuff, no? Um, so the first thing that you will do is look at the product. Let's say you're doing a toaster. Um, well, you will look at the different components that, that you might need. Maybe you will need solid to make sure that you, you're warming your hardware uh, at the maximum, wherever, right? But the first thing that you will find is that there is ongoing work. There is uh, people who are uh, thinking in terms of uh, how do they improve their their thing uh, on a daily basis. They definitely don't care about your toaster or whatever product you're doing, or at least they don't care in principle because they have never heard of it. 
sometimes even they won't be able to think of it because your own employment conditions don't allow them to. So um, the first thing that you need to do is to reach out to these people and say, all right, what are you people going on about? Uh, let's see if we can work together. Um, and it is this step where you start understanding what they do and what drives them that, well, it's the first moment where you can measure um, what kind of involvement and what kind of collaboration you can establish at this point, right? Then uh, as soon as you decide that this makes sense, and obviously it makes a lot of sense to, to do it with KDE because obviously KDE is a very nice community to work with. Um, what, you, what you will have to do is to start to coordinate with these people because you will have certain interests. Um, I now realize that my example of the toaster was um, very bad, uh, excuse it, but I guess that you understand what, what I am talking about anyway. Um, you will have to uh, go to the solid people. You will have to go to the maybe plasma people and say, all right, I need this this set of changes to happen. How do we make it uh, possible and, and, and available to, to us to be able to create our own product, right? And it's at that moment when you start to see well, the kind of, of work you will end up doing, because like we established in the beginning, uh, you won't be doing all of your product from scratch. Like, Admittedly, a big part of the success of free software has been that now nowadays people don't have to ever again do a product from scratch because they always have something to set uh, their, 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 their feet on, right? Uh, I can imagine I, I I wasn't doing products back then, but like 25 years ago, people well did start creating a tiny kernel for every little product that they were doing. Uh, right now, big parts of the success of of uh, such very important projects like the Linux kernel or even Android indeed has been that they are free software and that people can leverage them. And this means that you don't ever need to start a project from scratch. And what we now think that is from scratch is never as from scratch as, well, it probably wa uh, once was. Um, in KDE, we offer the opportunity for people to define their from scratch to a fairly high level uh, area, uh, as long as they co collaborate with us and as long as we can find common spaces where to, where to work together. Uh, that, of course, goes in, in line with well, being able to work properly with uh, products like Qt, for example, or, or maybe nowadays Wayland, et cetera. Right? Now, it keeps happening that um, people look at, look at our stuff and say, all right, I'm going to pick this thing and I'm going to fork it and I'm going to use it to make my brilliant, lovely toaster because I, I know so much better than these poor people uh, how, how to create my product. But in practice, uh, at least it has been my experience that uh, this is always a narrow-minded position. Um, whenever you create a product, for example, at the very least, or in the European Union, any electronics need to have a two years warranty, right? And what well, you can say, all right, as long as I don't touch it, I, I will be able to continue uh, supporting this thing. But um, we've all seen this falling apart every now and then. Um, the, continuing the development of, of, of devices has been a big problem. It's something that we can very clearly see in, in the case of, of, of Android, where um, you see d devices that have been uh, announced with the greatest of honors that they uh, disappear from the market as soon as a new version of Android uh, arrives, because, well, <laughs> nobody dares to, um, to port that over. And the very reason or that this is happening is the very reason that it ha it happens when people fork us or they fork the Linux kernel, which is 
you need to do a lot of work to be able to to maintain over time a certain stack and and i don't think that any any of us are are interested in in collaborating with products that will that you know for 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 certain that as soon as the newest no, or the next Linux, Linux kernel that, that happens, the next version of whatever appears, you won't be able to support it. And you will start to pile up on bug reports that you know that you cannot fix because they your changes won't reach the uh, deliverables that you give to your users or or so. Um, this is something that we, for example, also discussed very uh, about at length when when talking about apps. We don't want to be to create apps that when we fix them, our users uh, don't don't uh, don't get the fix. Well, if you forked one of our apps because you needed to add an icon, you needed to add a new button, then as uh, from that moment, every fix that anyone from the Kitty community does, or every fix that anyone else does in, in, in the, that product, it won't reach the users, which is, by the way, probably the number one frustration of every free software hacker and developer and contributor that has ever existed. The impossibility of being able to address something that you know how to address, it's just that you know that somebody decided that, uh, well, therefore it was uh, more important than being able to uh, solve issues. So in practice, what I want to say is that if you're working on free software products and um, you have to take this decision between do I collaborate or do I just fork? Well, don't fork, <laughs> work with us, uh, make it possible for us to, to, to work together and, and create a, a strategy that, that spans over the years rather than a couple of campaigns for creating tiny apps or whatever that that could make sense um yeah i think it's it's obvious enough um so what it does it look like when you know that you're creating something that works together with the rest of 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 a community because in practice the community will still not uh, bend over your will, obviously and understandably, and as it should be. But um, while well, you still need to have this kind of assurance, well, we've seen this happen uh, in several occasions around. Uh, there's very successful uh, projects uh, all over the place that do uh, partnerships with different uh, companies. And it's a matter of shared responsibilities. If you, your organization shows that as, as long as you use that product, that product is not going to break. If uh, when you contribute things, they don't break it for other people. If you sometimes even put something on the table that the rest of the team maybe wanted but never uh, found the time to do, um, it will make it easier also for them to decide that at some point to say, all right, uh, let's work together. Let's see uh, what I can do for you. Or in practice, just they will be testing it and they will be using it. And if there's a small pet peeve that they find that isn't, well, something that you never found or you didn't care or because it's not the hardware you're just testing on, they will fix it. And this is something very important, right? Because when the next version of your product happens, well, it will be tested on other software, and you will have a much uh, wider portfolio. Uh, by the way, I think that I am saying very obvious things, but I also had the feeling when I was preparing this talk that there's very obvious things that we never say, and then I never know if it's obvious to everyone. So I might be Captain Obvious today, if I if I am. Well, I'm sorry. So tiny, the button. So in practice, there's this weird sentence I put together here, but it's about helping the community help you to help them. And maybe we can uh, look at it from, from the end, right? Like as, as soon as you help the community uh, to some extent, the, the local teams, they 
will accept you as part of, of their team, as part of, of their community, which is going to mean that uh, they will be able to help you, right? As soon as you start contributing to them, as, as soon as you start reviewing their merge requests, as soon as you start um, well, making sure that the project moves forward, uh, well, it's already a, a mutual uh, help, which will also mean that they will be helping you, right? Because if you're working as a team, uh, whatever they do, it will it should also have an impact on what you do, at least on a bigger picture kind of perspective. And of course, this also means that you sometimes have to uh, develop certain things a bit slower. But um, I have had this feeling of telling people, you know, this saying of uh, if you want to go. Uh, quick, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I think that free software is all about that, right? It's about making sure that in the longer run, we can still support each other. Uh, of course, that you can do the very specific things if you just forget about these people who have their own kind of thoughts that uh, are not yours, and your thoughts are always better and more important and interesting. But in practice, if KD is still here, it's because uh, what we create at large is more important than the specific ideas that everybody had, but also that the specific ideas that everybody had ended up creating what we reached out, uh, which is especially important this year, right? Like we're celebrating 25 years. Uh, this is a, an amazing feat, and it only speaks for all of the people who have been putting their small thoughts and well, working together um, to, to, to create this big thing. Now, it's a matter, uh, a matter of talking to people. Um, it can be very hard to some people, I guess. It's definitely harder nowadays that we're in a pandemic and we don't get, get to hug each other. I can promise you, those of you who were not around when we actually used to meet, that. We didn't used to punch each other, so that was a nice thing. Uh, there was much more hugging and 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 discussions, right? Uh, even as as Nuno was talking about earlier, like there's a lot of friendships that have have been created by this mere talking to people, and all of the uh, a lot of the discussion uh, of the of the discussions that Nuno had with uh, people, a lot of the friends he made, and I'm sure that a lot of the rest of us, I know that from myself as well, they have been, uh, well, friendships, not only based about the technical topics, but, well, also business topics and beyond. And and this is, this is very important because it also brings new opportunities that are not the whatever reason that you approach the community in the first place. But um, you know, the, the fact that you are in that conversation also makes you a little bit more powerful. But to be able to be in that position when we, when you can have a truthful and honest conversation with the, with the community, you need to be clear. It happens sometimes that uh, people say, "I want like to create this product around," or "I come from a company, right?" And they have twenty five NDAs, and they have uh, they cannot really tell you anything. But they're very demanding, of course, because well, they know what they're talking about, but you don't. And then you end up in this position of, all right, you do your thing, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna worry myself about my own problems. But in practice, this is this is how you end up having a fork and thinking that you're amazing. But this is also how you end up making KDE not as good as it could have been, because I am sure that part of those ideas behind the NDA were useful. And also, as soon as you fork, like I was saying, uh, you also end up in a position where all of the work in 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 KDE also doesn't apply to you, and it puts you also in a in a worse position. Being transparent is also even very related. Uh, if people see what you're doing, they will also be able to get excited about what you're doing, and even be, want to be part of it. If you're transparent about what you're doing. Uh, people might want to join you even 
to be hired by you at some point. And if you're transparent, they will see the value of what you're doing and maybe let you do your thing and they will be doing their thing and together we will create something amazing. Being reliable is also goes in the part of the conversation, right? Like you can be saying a lot of nice things. A lot of people are very good at saying nice things, but in the end, they don't end up delivering. And it's also something that it, it, it's frustrating because you have this company or this uh, group of people who say, we're gonna do all of these things. And then until the changes don't get into your Git repository, you feel like, it's it's not getting there but then as soon as it does as, as soon as you see that well the changes got there that you're leveraging whatever feature whatever uh, contribution whatever set of icons whatever ideas that were put on the table well then you have the opportunity of of um having that conversation that you wanted to have and even have it on the on the longer run because in practice i don't think that anyone looks at any professional uh problem in a short term at least not someone who really wants to uh produce something that matters to their their clients when when you talk to th about things that matter you talk about uh longer runs even longer runs that we can afford from within kd so it's also uh something that uh different kind of product a uh, different kind of organization can also help us offer right because um well the nature of open source i would say and free software is that you need to be slightly quite uh, quickly paced and so that people can join and help as soon as they can now this is a blue systems meeting for from 2016 i would like to say that uh i couldn't find any picture that is more recent because I couldn't find it. Well, no, it, I didn't find anyone because I couldn't find it. You will uh, know most of the people, those of you who have been around in KDE, those of who you don't, well, you can research them. They're all very nice people. Half of them are not with Blue Systems anymore, but also that this is kind of how it works. Most of them, though, have stayed around in the KDE community, which also speaks for how important uh, sitting your 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 business on a on a reliable community it, it means um well as i am talking to the Blue systems people right now for a second uh thank you very much for this almost 10 years right now but now it's the moment where i'm gonna change my virtual hat because in virtual conferences you have virtual hats i don't know if you know and now I remove my Blue Systems person hat and I put my KD Hacker hat on, my nowadays KDV president hat on. Um, I've been on the KDV board for the last uh, seven years. I checked yesterday, well, month plus or minus, but more or less that. Um, and I've been in uh, KD developers for the last 14 years, so. I guess I am in the in the middle of the scale right now. And what I'm going to talk to you about now is a little bit how everything I discussed earlier relates to what, um, well, to my, my persona right now with this hat. And as well, how we are trying to fix the, the problems of how hard it is to become a professional around Haiti and 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 continue con continue contributing when you realize that well you're not a student anymore and you need to per pay certain bills. With a new hat also comes a glass of glass of water. So um, for the longest time, KDV started in 1999, but well, for me, actually the important thing is that KDE started in 1996, which uh, is gonna be 25 years this year, second mention. But it wasn't until, until 2017 when we hired the first people to work actively with the community. We, uh, the KDV had had uh, people before, uh, namely Claudia. Hi Claudia, if you're watching. 
and and Petra later on, but they were more on the administration side. And at, at some point, and for different circumstances, we decided to hire a couple of marketing contractors. And I think that this was uh, one of the biggest changes that I've seen from, well, working in KDE, in that, well, first we were all uh, trying to do our best and in our free time, meaning, uh, not that I think that the contractors don't, but uh, at some point we decided to, okay, let's introduce two different people who are gonna fill in a position that uh, should have been filled in by the community, but for any kind of reason is not really working out. Um, And I am talking about this because, um, well, you will have seen Lydia's and Neofito's presentation the other day about make a living. We're suggesting a certain amount of changes. And, and I think that it's important that, well, somebody talks about this at some point, right? Um, what's the big difference between, uh, well, my former hat about being a Blue Systems person um, the hat that I don't wear, but the hat that uh, the contractors nowadays wear, and the hat that most of you as community members wear, right? Um, well, in Blue Systems, namely, uh, I basically have a boss that tells me what to do, which, well, it generally has been aligned with what Kitty has uh, needed, and you ha you will have seen a lot of my colleagues as well as myself working together with you. But also, you have seen people from other uh, organizations that well, they joined with KD when they needed something from KD, but well, only then. Um, the big difference here with the contractors is that they get hired to fulfill the vision of uh, of KD at large, and well necessarily uh sub, sub part a section of of our our community in the case of uh the marketing people we hire them to help with the promotion of of our products and well helping us uh get out there but also always with the the background of what kd is what kd stands for and well furthering that because, well, KDV, which is committed to supporting KD, uh, is, well, hiring them for that, right? And this is a challenge, right? This is a challenge because um, you become this one person that uh, is working among a lot of people who are in a community doing their thing casually. and well, first they are, they have to work a minimum amount of hours or, I mean, with the HR understanding of the minimum amount of hours, it's not like we're forcing them to work, but uh, well, it's their duty to to work on uh, for these hours on a certain topic. And as such, uh, they need to coordinate with a community of people, a community let's remember that wasn't, uh, all that active uh, at least when they start because if an area of KDE is generally populated, but well, we're not gonna hire people to to work, work on it, right? Uh, and, and, and make it alive and make it do things. And well, also try to work with people who all don't have all of the time on, in, in the world. And when they do have time, they do work on the things that they feel like it's fun and, and interesting. But um, I think that it's also very important that we look at this as an opportunity. And well, I am not only talking here to the actual contractors, but that we see it like the rest of us as well. Um, it's an opportunity for Kerry to have something that organically didn't get filled. There's, there's things that humans were not always uh, interested in, in working on. Um, like you could say promo, and by the way, for example, the case of promo, we had had uh, people working on the community act actively in the in the past, 
it never was uh, ideal, arguably, but uh, we always did things. But it's it's important that we see that we have the opportunity right now because marketing or maybe the documentation case is is more relatable. We have uh, we have had documentation over the last twenty five years. I am sure that one of the first commits that uh, someone did in in KD was to add the first documentation because while explaining how things work, be it. Uh, APIs and technical documentation, be it uh, user documentation, is is something important. But then, um, well, I don't know. I, I don't really see the chat, but raise your hand if you love working on documentation. Uh, because, well, the next question is, why are you not working on documentation much more uh, in the past? Um, it's an opportunity to see that KDE has the mechanism right now to well, articulate work in that area so that actually people can continue working on what they're passionate about, what they want to do, which is something that I have the feeling that we in KDE we do generally well. Um, we've had people work uh, on very hard topics in the past and, and resolve them with excellence. Uh, the fact that there's hundreds thousands, millions of computers in the, around the world running our software is nothing but proof of it, right? Uh, and one can only expect that if we manage to polish these uh, parts that are the least attended, uh, we will be able to reach uh, different parts from our community that were never been able to reach before. And this just happens by working with the community. It's even working from within the community, these people are well, put there in the middle and say, now do free software things, uh, which is basically what we end up doing when we when we join KDE. I mean, of course, when you join KDE, you say, um, I have this great idea and I'm going to put it in practice. My, my personally first contribution to KDE was well, working in KAlgebra and actually KAlgebra itself. So it's not like I arrived one day and I didn't really know what to do. And it's not like our contractors really don't know what to do, right? But it still is, well, being put in the position where you have to work with new people or maybe old people from, from a slightly privileged um, circumstance, which is just at least that you have some time that you have to spend uh, on a certain topic. Uh, beyond the positions we already discussed, well, there's also the make a living position for uh, positions that, uh, well, I'm not gonna talk about a lot here because, um, well, like we said, Neofitos and Lydia also discussed it, but they are also, again, another, uh, well, moving a bit uh, closer to the daily uh, matters of our community. Uh, we are a community that creates free software, and they are going to be people creating part of this free software. Um, they are positions that have been designed specifically to further certain areas of our community that, um, well, we feel that can can expand our reach in ways that, well, I cannot really scream enough to people work on this, and it's gonna be amazing even if I am wearing that magnificent uh, president hat. I don't know if you imagine the president hat, but I think that it looks a bit like a wizard hat, like like. Um, <sighs> Gandalf. Gandalf left us, but the presidents, we have a mystical hat, virtual hat that we pass on. In Lydia, it looked a bit too big, but it also looked amazing. But anyway, I'm going to try to remove that image from your heads and, and continue on the topic. So for those of you who haven't seen the presentations, we're going to have three new positions. One that is uh, working on what we call base software, which is at least to be defined 
but it basically should be stuff along the lines of Qt frameworks, KD frameworks, uh, maybe well, some underlying uh, problems we might have to be uh, addressed upstream. But in general, the idea is to make sure that people can create with, with what we create uh, and within us uh, with the best of assurances. We'll have a person who will uh, work and think about uh, how to make um, hardware projects from within KDE, like, like some projects that we've already seen lately, and well, facilitate it. Uh, there's always certain small annoyances that are generally not even within our uh, repositories, in our code bases, but that without these things being so getting solved, well, your products never uh, flourish like we always expected they would. Well, this little wizard will help us with that. And then a third position who will be a person helping us get uh, in certain app stores and making sure that everyone around the world can somewhat reach our software and well, make best use of it. Um, because in practice, what we create is for for everyone to enjoy, not uh, a select number of people anyway, right? Now, maybe this is the weird part of my talk, but I think that it's the more most important part as well. Like, how do I help? How? What is my role? And by my role, I don't mean Alicia's role with any of the hats, but like any of ours who are part of this community um, in making sure that uh, this is a success. Um, KDV is spending a sizable amount of money in, in, in doing this. And well, we're doing it because we think that it's very important that uh, KDE is catered for, also because we have to for legal reasons to uh, well not have surpluses but in practice to make sure that the KD community doesn't stagnate in the comfort zone of whatever the status quo is right now right now uh, how you, can you help why well, you should be working with these people uh, the new contractors and even uh, the previous ones like they the, they are fellow community members you don't need to treat them like uh, they are blessed, which somebody, some people might think uh, or have thought in the past that they were. But also, you don't have to just uh, let them do their thing in a corner, right? You need to be able to communicate with them. You need to communicate with them. You need to make sure that you understand how they work and what they're working on, much like you need to understand how your other teammates uh, work because, like I was saying earlier, if we're not transparent with each other, it's very complicated to work together properly, right? Something that is also very important is that uh, well, we need to work in the same direction. Um, here we could show this cheesy picture of two dogs uh, pulling on, on a different side or pulling on, on the same direction. Obviously, those pulling in the same direction will always uh, go uh, faster and further. Um, I think that the all of the positions that we've put, put, put forward, they're very uh, exciting for anyone in the community. Um, and working with them can only mean that your contributions will be more valuable, more relevant in the longer run than they would be if you were working alone. Because in practice, the, the this everything boils down to uh, if you're in a company and you work alone, nothing works. If you're in the community and you work alone, nothing really works. And if you are a contractor and you work alone, nothing really works. But if we work together, well, we're onto something, right? Something that also is uh, important, especially when, when they begin, is that some of us, we've been around for a very, very long time. And 
we know a lot of unspoken rules within the community. Well, first of all, we shouldn't have unspoken rules or unwritten rules or whatever. We should be able to, um, well, to express what are our uh, ways to work in, in general. We've done a lot of work with this, with the manifesto, with the, um, well, with our vision, with the statutes of the KDV, if you wish. But in practice, there's always uh, certain things that one needs to know. One needs to know who's who. Um, assuming that they uh, that they know also doesn't help anything. But uh, maybe something that you can uh, help with is by offering this um, this experience, right? <laughs> also, that uh, we need to understand that none of the contractors have magical powers not the ones that uh, we have right now and i would safely admit that i don't think that we're gonna ha hire anyone with magical powers um everyone's la hours are limited um they, they are for those people in the community and they are for those people uh contracted um well let's understand that and and like i was saying earlier earlier let's talk to each other like like peers and equals which is what we are uh, even if there's some people who have well, the small um advantage of being uh well contracted to for a few hours to work on certain things um something that a lot of people fear and well you should not just maybe fear but actually like work against this we should be taking and doing the work that we wanted to do anyway. We should, uh, well, don't be afraid of taking tasks because somebody is uh, contracted around the topic or the area. If you are very interested in Android, don't stop yourself working on Android topics because there's uh, an apps contractor. If you're very passionate about uh, YouTube videos like Nicolois, for example, um, don't stop yourself from doing it because there's probably it wouldn't make any sense, right? It wouldn't make it better for them and it wouldn't make it better for you because in practice, our resources are always limited and they are for everyone. It's also very important that, um, let me turn the lights on because it got really dark. It's very important that you apply the, the positions as they appear. The, the better candidates we have, the better we will be able to have uh, outcomes, positive out outcomes in practice. Um, there's always a certain onboarding time that is necessary, and it will be the case for anyone. But if you've been around for a long time, if you are familiar with the topic, it will always be a bit a bit easier for for you to to join and help in. And in practice, reach out, uh, reach out to us as the KDV board, if you wish reach out to the contractors if you want to talk to them because like i said they don't have magical powers which also means that they don't do these uh weird electric ray things um we also we always should be able to talk to each other and it's only by well having the discussions that we will be able to well work better together right but um what I want you to uh, to think about is that this is a collective opportunity. This is not just a thing that the KDV is doing nowadays, but that it's our chance we have to uh, to attain certain uh, opportunities that right now have been just unattainable to us. And it's going to be through well hard work because I am sure that all of the people we have and we will have on board will work hard to drive us in this direction. And if we help them, if we work together, we will be able to uh, well reach millions of people through our app. We will be able to uh, well help lots of developers start de developing our application applications for us, with us, through better documentation, through um, well, better based software so that they don't have to start 
well, working around problems we might have in our base systems, but just doing their things, right? Um, embracing this collective opportunity can only, uh, well, take us to the other side. And I am sure that there's uh, good things to to have to find there. And this only can happen by working together. This is the academy presentation for 2018 because like I said earlier, I suck at looking for pictures. I also, I'm a bit tired of seeing the Milan picture when we have a normal academy picture, so 2018. Um, it's, it's very nice working with you, you all and it's gonna continue to be amazing. I wanted to talk a little bit about the future but I think that here the important thing is that, uh, well, let's focus on what we have on the table, like carpe diem a little bit. Uh, let's embrace this opportunity. Let's uh, make sure that that we make the most of it. Let's make sure that, uh, well, all of these goals that we had are with our read uh, when, when the time comes and well then we get to talk about the future about uh, well what how has our organization changed after uh, after this work and how do we make the best of it like we're doing nowadays right carpe diem now you see the picture Okay, this is this is karma. This was the picture of my desk because Adam didn't show it yesterday. And I am sure that Adam today hacked my PDF to not show my desk once more. So that's on you, Adam. It wasn't all that interesting anyway. So um if you have any questions, that's probably a good moment to have a bit of a conversation if there's some time. Otherwise, uh, well, you can reach me at, this is my name, this is my email, this is my matrix handle down there, and the, 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 the other one is, well, my Telegram and Twitter as well, and Mastodon, because I am not very original with my, my namings, so. Was everyone? Thank you very much, Alex, for this presentation. I'm glad that the hack was successful, and you did not <laughs> sidestep my uh, my ban on your desk pictures. Um, so we do have a so question already in the uh, in the widget here from the audience. Uh, by the way, you probably missed it because you you had the presentation, but there's already a a Gandalf uh, Photoshop with your face on. You, nice. You'll probably be be <laughs> sent it uh, shortly after after the presentation. I'm sure. So the question comes from Jonathan Rido. We have a goal to get more apps on more app stores, but haven't attracted many people to do the fairly easily grant work of packaging apps. Should we? I'm not sure which of your many hats this is aimed at. I am super sorry, but can you repeat the question, please? Sure. We have a goal to get more apps on more app stores, but haven't attracted many people to do the fairly easy grant work of packaging apps. Should we? Um, I, I must disagree. There's a lot of people in KDE who have been doing this work. It's a matter of um, making sure that uh, their work is um, compensated somehow. Uh, I think that big part of the problem with being a free software hacker in your free time is that the challenging problems are interesting, but the most boring ones well, are boring. Um, and we have seen well, people, people pumping the packaging, for example, on Windows, on Mac, on uh, Snap, on Flatpak, right? Um, at this point, we need to do the extra mile work, right? Which uh, includes QA, it, it includes uh, actual just 
testing that things work, uh, reaching out to different applications and see how how they want to do that. Um, and I have the feeling that the people who have been uh, doing this work, well, it wasn't their persona, right? Um, if you're the kind of person who will uh, sit down in front of your computer at midnight with a well a cup of coffee or a cup of beer and and start hacking, maybe you're not the kind of person who will go chasing around different people and doing QI on applications. This is this is uh, a guess, but I think that it makes sense. And actually, I would say, does it make sense to you too? It doesn't need to be you, Adam, but maybe whoever is listening. Although if you want to speak your mind, I don't mind. Um, I think I'd rather go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, not to uh, discuss too much on the Q&A part of the talk. Uh, this next one comes from Abetz. Uh, from your perspective, what seems to be the biggest fear in hiring contractors and have them work along with volunteers? Well, we've had this discussion in the past. Uh, I think that it was very uh, strongly ingrained in our DNA at some point. Maybe not the DNA, but maybe in our psyche. That um, we didn't hire, we did the work in our free time, and that's how we managed to do all, all of the things. And well, we've admittedly gone a long way. Um, one of the obvious fears could be that if somebody now is being paid to do something, what, why should I sit down at midnight with a cup of coffee slash beer and start hacking on that packaging I care about? And my personal conclusion and what I think that have been discussed with the different people also when we were doing, for example, the make a living thing is that um, we generally do this thing because it matters to us and we do the thing we want to do. But um, there's always going to be certain things that we're not going to want to do that much. Um, for example, there's parts of our contractors' work that they're doing nowadays and they're doing excellently that I have never done. And it hasn't been by chance. It's maybe not in my uh, soul to do that. Uh, maybe I should have been doing it, but then it, this would also have meant that I would not have been doing other things. Right? So in practice, the fear is, will they be taking my my tasks? Will they be? Will I lose uh, will to work on the project? Will I be jealous of uh, certain contractors because they're being paid and I am not? And I think that we shouldn't be jealous. I think that we are mature enough to be able to work together, but I don't know. I mean, maybe whoever did the question, I sorry, didn't hear the name properly. Maybe they cannot see themselves being jealous and that's how it should be. Uh, in practice, we've all seen that we can have some people in our community being uh, paid for the work they, they're doing. And we can also appreciate, I would say, the, the work they do rather than just be jealous and saying, ah, which I think it's 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 great and it speaks of our maturity. And I think that we can only use this opportunity to do better software than to be bitter to one another. Okay, thank you very much for the answer. Just uh, as a side note, for, as a contractor for the KDEV myself, I can say that being a contractor has uh, integrated me more with the community than I'm not sure exactly how else I could be so much so quickly integrated. So that's also something to keep in mind. Maybe that's a presentation you should be doing next academy, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, those are all the questions that we have. Uh, thank you very much again, Alex, for uh, the presentation and for answering the questions.